No, sorry. Can't stand still here any longer. Nine bloody weeks I've been standing here. I thought the idea of making a clone was so as he would do it. Hello and welcome back to another whiskey review with me, the Whiskey Novice. It's review number 62, part 9 in the final part of my series, That Awkward Age. Looking at some whiskies aged between the between 3 and 16, not including 10 year olds or 12 year olds. And we've gotten to here. This wasn't actually one that I initially part, had part of this series, but I picked up another bottle. And if you know me, you know I'm a Springbank fan. So given the opportunity, given a series where I can focus on a Springbank, I'm going to do it. Now, the 15 year old, given the respect that Springbank have grown for themselves, if I were to suggest that I didn't like this whiskey, yep. yes, something may befall me. So I'm not going to suggest that I don't like this whiskey. What I am going to tell you before I get into this whiskey is give it time. Let it sit, nurture it, nourish it, and it will blossom. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, let it stay there. Go and do something else. Leave it as long as you can and come back and you will get quality whiskey. To pour this, to drink it immediately, is to do it in great injustice. Pour it, let it sit, cover it, perhaps with something from your favorite video tuber. Or whatever they call them. And, uh, and, and it will turn into a, a great whiskey. It's, I'm making a point of this because this whiskey is tight. It, it remains tight for a while. It needs time to open up, in my opinion. So what we're looking at, we're looking at 46% non-chill filtered and natural colored. Now I don't generally talk, as you know much about color, uh, only if it's a very, very nice pale natural color will I talk about it or something or if it's been over colored I'll maybe talk about it in this case I'm just going to mention the color simply because I don't think the color is actually very pleasant in this one uh, it's brown no none of your amber this or gold in that it's brown and it's <laughs> it's but at the end of the day it's what it tastes like isn't it and this one is a good one it's a 46% non chill filtered, no colour added. This has been in the glass a while. So let's get in and see what we get. Sharp initially. Sharp, sweet. Not in a bad way. There's a nice lemon citrusy sharpness of it. And sweetness. This is Worm tub condensing again used at Springbank. So yet again, you're looking at a dirty whiskey, textured whiskey. It's got body, it's unctuous, it's meaty. And this in particular is meaty. And to me, actually that meat has a name and it's ham. And not only ham, but honey glazed ham. And not only honey glazed ham, but honey glazed ham and pineapple. This is a meal in a glass. There's a herbal note in there as well. Not 100%, it's maybe wintergreen. Yeah, there is a slight wintergreeny sort of minty something. There is, a set of it pineapple, there is a tropical fruit feel to it. Maybe mango. Still sweet golden syrup. And hidden in there, strangely, it's something that I don't get very often. Porridge oats. Now, Springbank use Dunnage warehousing for storing their casks. So you're looking at dank, dark, old warehouses. So the porridge oats might be that playing in a little. Could be wrong, but it just that's where it's playing in my head. New leather and confectioner's sugar, certainly confectionery sweets. So there's a lot going on in that nose. Into the palate. Still sharp, still sweet. Sweet and sour delivery. 
thick. Tongue's just very coating. Freshly squeezed orange juice. There's a fusty thing on the, the palate. Yet again, that could be the donage, which brings that pipe tobacco. And there was a, I'm finding a mechanical machinery note, and it, what it brings me back, what it reminds me of, I may have mentioned one time in the past that my grandfather was a clockmaker, watch fixer, fixed that sort of thing, and it's clock oil. It's the memory I have of clock oil. I think clock oil is very high silica or something like that, but it's a very distinct smell. Not that I'm saying I ever tasted it, but it just reminds me of that. You know, smokiness right at the back. There will be a portion of peated malt in this. Finish. Finish is lovely. Quite medium the long and length and it's tangy there's a tang right at the end of it sort of rolls and then tangy tangy is a very good word to actually describe this whiskey there's a lot of tang going on i'm going to add some water not a whole lot of water it doesn't take a lot of water and it you will see it go cloudy pretty quick i've noticed the spring bank you will get that scotch mist because it's non-chill filtered. Springbank, strangely, seems to happen more often than not. I don't mind it at all. Water makes it more citrusy. It makes it creamier. It takes some of that sharpness off the nose. Some of the sweetness rounds out to become more fresh fruit. There's an apple bite, green apple, lemon sherbet. More confe I said about the confectioner's sugar earlier and sweets. There's, I don't know if you know, where are these uh, uh, spaceships or UFOs or something that were called, and they were almost a, a cardboardy texture. They were a candy or sweet with lemon sherbet in the middle of them, inside them. And this reminds me of them. Hmm. that palate just becomes really unctuous and fresh more tropical fruit kiwi still with that thread of fustiness run through it and it, it just makes for a very well balanced thing and the palate or the finish becomes Yeah, the finish comes slightly rounder. That tang sort of not just as sharp, still very, very good. Look, this very, very good whiskey. I reviewed the 10 and the 12, Springbank 10 and 12, I'll throw the, the, the reviews up there. And the 12 I reviewed, I wasn't overly enamored by simply because it was just that batch i thought i've had better batches of the 12 the 10 all day long still love the springbank 10. of the three in this entry level the 10 12 and 15 the 15 would be my least favorite actually i still prefer the 12 and the 10 but still still a beautiful whiskey so this leads on i suppose to this yes if you liked this i'm going to stay in Campbelltown. I find it hard, or found it sort of hard to find something that will compare with a good Springbank. I know I used this to compare to Craig Elegy 13, but that was more the feel of a dirty whiskey that I was getting at. This has an all round thing going on for it. And if you like this, I'm going to tell you, try this. Kilkerran 8 year old. The uh, Kilkerran 8 year old just it's Mitchell family again, isn't it? They know what they're doing. This, the bourbon matured edition. There is a sherry matured edition, but for me, the bourbon actually felt, it's that sweet thing yet again. 
it, it feels more like what's going on here. If you can get this, yes, try this. It, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful whiskey. So, if you like Springbank 15, I recommend Cochrane 8 year old. So, there you go. The end of another series and a series that, that you've shown me great support for, and, and I, I can't thank you enough. I wasn't 100% sure about where this series would go, but it would appear that, that it's the sort of thing you enjoyed. And as I say, some great comments, some lovely whiskies, definitely some lovely whiskies. So uh, thank you very, very much for joining me for this series. I will be back with another series next week. Don't know what it'll be, but you'll see soon enough. Until then, thank you for joining me. As always, thank you very, very much to my patrons. If you want to join that group, link is below. Here is to your good health. See you again. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.